mean that inactive. What we've actually been doing is looking at the pit lab autopilot and the OSD board. Uh, initially we were going to put it into the Venturi wing, the large wing from flyingwings.co.uk. Uh, in the end we've actually fitted it to another Falcon Evo. Uh, the reason for this is just really the weather at the moment. We've hardly got any flying in at all. Uh, the weather's been really bad, it can be very very intermittent, uh, very windy and stormy so everything's really kind of been on hold while we've got these, uh, while well, the weather clears somewhat. So what we'll do is have a look at the installation of this, uh, it's not as easy to see unfortunately in here as it was in the Venturi but we'll give you an idea of how it's actually been fitted and how we've configured it. The mounting of the pit lab board itself into the wing, it says it must be vibration free so I've got it mounted on a piece of foam and then actually fastened to the base of this compartment with double sided sticky tape. The accelerometers on the pit lab board do actually give a display out to the OSD and this is given in G. If the G creeps up above 2 then you've got to look at the mounting that there's too much vibration passing through the board for a safe flight. So as we can see from the L9R we've got the single S bus cable to the first pin and then in the next bank of pins we can actually see Stop and break there because Nancy the flying dog started barking. So let's go back to the L9R again. So we've got the L9R which is mounted there. Obviously it's long range antenna, the patch board antennas and only two cables coming out of it. So the one at the back here is S-Bus and goes into the number one connection of the pit lab and at the other end we've got the RSSI cable coming out of the RSSI socket of the L9R looping round and into the last of the input pins. Let's look this time at the output pins. A slight separation between this, the bank of input and the bank of output pins. Pin 1 is an aileron. 2 and 3 not used next pin there is to the ASC and that's had its voltage cable lifted because it doesn't need that, that would just be repeating what we've got and could cause a possible loop. The next plug there is the second aileron. So this last pin, the last plug here on the last set of pins is basically to the back, so that's actually supplying power to this side of the board. Now, as you'll know, the back's actually mounted at the other side of this compartment, so we've got the 5 volts going into these end pins and then the 12, it's a dual voltage back, so, and then the 12 volt is actually going out to the OSD which also supplies the power for the camera and video transmitter. Looking at the board from the other angle, what we can see are uh, the plugs very very clearly marked. So the plugs we actually have in use, this one here is actually piggybacked down to the OSD and this is the GPS. The plug where some wires are bared back goes down to the front end of the OSD card underneath uh, and is actually the video in and then these pins here is actually going down to the video out and the 12 volt supply. Uh, what I'll do is actually insert a still at this point so you can see these connections more clearly than they are actually when they're mounted in the unit because the 
they're obviously right up against the foam and you can't actually see them there. Now as with the first Falcon Evo that we actually fitted out, uh, the test flights for this are going to be made with lots of the cabling running on the outside of the wing and until we're perfectly happy uh, with the unit and that the unit's going to stay in here then we will actually not bother digging holes in the wing and taping them over until uh, everything's running. Once, once we're actually happy, everything, we're just going to leave things accessible for now until we're perfectly happy that everything's working as it should. And as we look down on the board, we can actually see from this angle the two USB sockets. The top one here on the autopilot and the one immediately below it is on the ISD. Now both of these sockets, again like the rest of the board, are very, very well built, good quality and not the iffy little connections you find on some other boards, like some of the Chinese APM boards. So, so far I've had no problem, but you must be aware when actually fitting this board to give yourself room to be able to plug in uh, a USB cable here. So the next thing we're actually going to do is to fasten this up and we'll get this connected to the computer. So as you can see here, we've got a USB cable. It's just a standard mini USB connected to the autopilot board. Uh, it's quite a tight fit, so just be careful when you're putting it in. It does click home rather nicely to let you know it's all located and it's there. Uh, you'll notice the L9R, they've actually got on Velcro, so that's had to move up and out the way to get that to plug in. Now if you were plugging in to the OSD board, it would be a matter of moving it down. And as you can see, that's now been moved down to the lower socket onto the OSD. A little bit fiddly because there's not a lot of room now to get a, a lead with such a big connection in there. But that's, that's just where I've actually fitted it and the type of lead I'm using with a lot of the cheaper leads they're a lot more flexible so no real issue but do remember to give yourself room to get that lead in because that is going to be important when we come to the setup with all USB leads and all cables going to and from a computer to circuit boards just be aware of static one that you grounded the plane itself that no statics built up you've tapped the outer casing of this USB against an earth just to make sure there's, there's no static jolt. Uh, your computer should be static free, so that shouldn't be causing an issue, but you do sometimes see a little bit of a, a little blue flash between these if a lot of static's built up, so it's just something to be aware of. So the large USB end now connected to the computer, and as we can see, the pit lab board is now powered up via the 5 volt feed in the USB. As you can see, it's actually powered the L9R up as well. Uh, so if we actually turn the radio on, we'd actually be able to monitor the radio on the software. Unlike the APM boards and Arduino powered or Arduino configured boards, no special drivers are actually needed. Uh, you literally just plug it into the computer, it'll spend a couple of minutes just looking for an appropriate driver which it has on board in the Windows directory so you're not going to have any issues connecting this. Now the actual software we're going to use to configure the board and configure the board in the wing is actually downloadable from pitlab.com uh, I'll publish the links both on the video and in the comments afterwards uh, as with all aircraft the wing itself has got to be set up, trimmed and ready to go before actually starting the OSD calibration and the autopilot calibration. The last couple of things we need to look at as far as connections go is this wire here which is yellow, white and black goes to the power sensor which is in the positive side of the battery cable before the ESC and goes down to the front of the OSD board. Again, I'll just flash the still up to show you the connection and the plug. 
down the other yellow cable in the small two pin plug coming away from the OSD is in fact the keyboard connection. The supply three button keyboard allows you to navigate through the OSD menu and select preferences. And just as a note, if you actually didn't want to carry this with you and you unplugged it from the board and for any reason you needed to access the OSD, uh, you can actually access the OSD menu just by shorting out the pins that the two pin plug connects to. Now, unlike a lot of autopilots, the pit lab unit uh, requires the wing to be set up in the mix on the transmitter as a flying wing. Uh, some of the other APM Hobby King actually require you set it up as uh, a plane. So with aileron, elevator, rudder, throttle, and then the mix on the autopilot turns it into a flying wing mix. This isn't the case with the pit lab. So the radio that I'm using is a uh, Tyrannis so let's have a look at that next and see where we went there. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to uh, an empty model channel. In fact, I think from this point on, let's get this camera on a tripod so it's a little bit better for you all to see. So our new model at Model 10, we could actually go and actually start renaming it and calling it a Flying Wing or whatever, Falcon or Pit Lab Test or but for the moment we'll just leave it as model 10 and then I'll show you what I've done with the other model selections to set this pit lab up. Here we are at model 10, so menu, page, we could name it there of course, flight modes, not yet, sticks, we're going to leave we're right the way through this uh, mixer is the standard mixer, servos, curves, we can go back to all of those later, custom switches again, telemetry, templates. So here simply go down to L1 Delta, enter, enter. So if we now go Page, page, page. And on the mixer, you will now see we've got channel one throttle, channel two elevator with the mix of aileron at minus 100. Sorry. Channel three elevator underneath that aileron uh, and rudder we can just ignore. Now you're going to have to set another two which we'll come back to at a later date uh, and the, the, two, the two other channels are going to be for switching the OSD display and switching the modes of the autopilot but we'll come back to that as we look at the software now it's worth pointing out at this stage that the guys at PitLab because I had some issues with the mix on the FreeSky being slightly different to the mix they were expecting to see they actually have written a software release, a firmware upgrade for both the OSD and the autopilot, which again we're going to look at in more detail because we're going to have to go to the PC for this one. Because I spent some time trying to navigate, sorry, this is the blue light keeps going out, navigating through these channels and setting these channels to the appropriate channels for the pit lab. Really, you don't have to do that, and now they've got an easy setup available on the OSD itself which detects the type of mix, the type of wing, how the servos are aligned, whether it's a wing or whether it's a standard acro setup uh, and does it all for you. So the next thing to do is uh, let's go and have a look at the actual software and that's my phone ringing so that's a good place to cut. Bye!